Hey guys, uh, I'm back home in Tuscaloosa finally, uh, where I can actually make videos and upload them. Uh, upload speed at, <laughs> in my hometown is pretty limited. It's a really rural place and uh, they just, the best internet package you can get is still extremely, extremely slow compared to what we have here. So, couldn't really make videos while I was home, but back up here, back in my comfort zone, ready to go again. So, sorry for not making many videos while I was gone. Uh, a lot of people ask me, they'll just send me messages asking me what I use to maintain my knives. And I get more than, uh, more of those messages than you would think. And they're all the same, what do you use to maintain your knives. And I never know what they're talking about, whether they're talking about lube or torx drivers. It, I don't know what they're talking about. So I figured I've had such a demand with that that I would just show what I call uh, my knife tool tackle box. And this is just something that I use to keep all of my most used tools in one spot so that if I need to go somewhere, I can just snap it and grab it and, and carry it wherever I need to go. Uh, this is just a regular Plano tackle box. I think I got it from Walmart for like five dollars, and they're really good. They're they're really durable. Uh, they keep things neat and organized, and for me that's important. Uh, I I like to be organized, otherwise I kind of freak out. But uh, if you have a lot of tools you use to maintain your knives, then I would definitely suggest getting one of these and stocking it up so that you don't have tools laying laying everywhere around you and you have to go hunt for them. So I guess I'll just open it up and go through what I carry in here. Uh, first off, of course you see a Spyderco Sharp Maker. I have it set up over here. Uh, but I just use, I put the whole kit together and I set it in here and then I keep my ultra fine stones in these two little tubes that they come with. So when I'm, when I'm traveling, you see my sharp maker here and my ultra fine stones are just sitting there uh, like that. And I keep it in here because I always like to have a sharp maker on me. No matter what, the sharp maker is a, an extremely versatile tool and it's, it's always good to have one on you. So I like to keep this on me at all times. And this bag I have in there is just the, the plastic bag to my Knives Plus strop block. Uh, if I'm traveling, I like to stick it in this bag. So I have the sharp maker and my ultra fine stones in here and underneath that I like to keep these hemostats. Um, hemostats are normally a medical tool but when you're maintaining knives, say you're lubing a pivot or you're taking a knife apart and trying to get into an area that's not easily gotten to, uh, you could take a q-tip and then clamp it with these hemostats and then you can get up in areas that, that you wouldn't be able to get to with your fingers. Or you can bend a q-tip on a right angle like this and then lock it in with hemostats and, and be able to get in it inside a knife like that and, and clean the inside of the scales. It's They're really handy. Uh, <clears throat> I first started using them when I started maintaining my guns, they're really, really handy for getting in uh, gas ports and stuff like that. But they also work good on knives too. So, <clears throat> Not sure where you can get these. I'm sure you can get them at any medical supply store on the internet. But they look just like scissors, but they're really like tiny needle nose pliers, as you can see right there. And they have a little locking mechanism where <clears throat> it just kind of ratchets in, as you can see. And they hold stuff fairly securely. Really good tools. Uh, pretty handy to have around, honestly, for a lot of things. So those hemostats just stay under my sharp maker right here. They don't get in the way of anything. Uh, next little piece of gear I have is some blue Loctite, which is honestly always good to have around. Uh, you never know when you need to Loctite a screw or something. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I just leave it in here in its own little section because it does tend to leak even though you have the the cap screwed on really tightly it does seem to leak just a little bit in here i have a little leatherman freestyle i think it is yeah leatherman freestyle and uh i just have it for pliers in case i need to to get something loose with pliers and it does have a knife on it uh that's pretty self-explanatory also 
I do keep a, a razor blade in here. Uh, not, not to cut things. I use it mainly for a scraper. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind scraping with this. Uh, instead of boogering up the blade on blades on one of my good knives, I could scrape with this, ruin the edge, and just flip the blade around or either replace it. And this is just a Gerber or EAB, I think they call it. You can get them at Walmart, Academy Sports. Uh, they're honestly pretty little, pretty handy little tools to have since they are a utility blade. You can replace that blade and, and not worry about messing your good knives up. And they fold into a really small package. Uh, compared to a Spyderco Leaf Storm, it's even smaller than that. So it's a really small knife. Um, that comes in handy a lot. This is my Benchmade Blue Box, which is just a Torx driver set. Um, I would keep the new Benchmade toolkit in here, but I have that in my everyday carry bag. I do suggest getting that new Benchmade toolkit. It is far superior to the Blue Box. Uh, I've done a video on it before. Uh, I guess I'll just grab it. This toolkit right here, it, it comes with Torx set, uh, Torx uh, T10, T8, T7, and T6. I think that's meant to be two T6s, but one is a little bit bigger than the other, so I just call it a T7. Uh, it has a flat head and a diamond file. And also over here, it has your standard hex keys, Allen keys, and then a Phillips head. Really good toolkit. Uh, great for EDC if you like to maintain your knives on the go or loosen a screw, tighten a screw. It's a really, really good kit. And the, uh, the bits are heat treated, so they don't really strip out very easily. Uh, but the Benchmade Blue Box works for in here since I have some redundancy, as you can see. Uh, I've definitely done a video on these. These are the Craftsman uh, Torx drivers. These are made out of chrome vanadium steel, the same steel that, that Case uses. Their carbon steel blades are made out of this exact steel, and they are heat treated. And uh, these Torx, Torx uh, drivers right here are some of the most high quality drivers that I've ever had. And uh, I do have two whole kits in here, so it's T5 to T10. And I have two sets of those, so I have two T5s, two T6s, and so on and so forth. And uh, the reason I have two in here is because you may have, like on the Leaf Storm, where you have a T6 on this side and a T6 on this side, but you can't adjust them independently. You have to have two T6s at one time adjusting them like this. Otherwise, it'll just spin. So that's why I have two of each in here. Um, here's my little pocket microscope. Really, really good on the go. Uh, really good anytime, honestly, to check and see what's going on with your edges. Uh, really, really good microscope. You can get them at Radio Shack for like $12. Done a video on this also. It's a really, really excellent piece of kit for for the price. I mean, $12 and you're getting a fairly fairly high-powered microscope for what it is. I mean, it's, it's tiny and fits in your pocket and you have a 100x magnification. And the optics are actually pretty impressive. So definitely worth it. In here I have a little random Allen key. I don't know what that's to actually. Uh, <clears throat> I have two corks in here which are very very handy when it comes to deburring a knife. Like if you have a little stubborn burr you can draw it through the cork a couple of times and it'll help to pull it off. Sometimes it won't but most of the time it will. Uh, these are the styrofoam corks. I can tell you that the natural cork, actual cork works better. A lot of the newer wine, wine bottles are coming with uh, these foam corks because they don't seem to skunk as easily, but the, the cork ones work better than the foam ones. Also in here I have a dog tag. Uh, it's just some random person's dog tag that I found when I was a kid, I think. But I uh, found it a while back and I realized that if you tape it up, <clears throat> then this radius right here is perfect for adjusting the pivot on a strider, the spanner pivot. Uh, this bridges that gap perfectly and if you tape it up then you're not going to scratch your pivot at all. So that's kind of a, a strider pivot adjustment tool for on the go. And it does actually work really well. Whew. I know it's, it's a long video, a lot of tools in here. This pocket I have uh, a piece of rubber band and this is because a lot of Kershaw's their pivot, like on the leak, if you wanted to loosen the pivot, uh, 
the female side of the pivot isn't locked into the other side. So when you're trying to unscrew the pivot, it'll just spin as an assembly. What you have to do is take the clip off and then cut a little piece of this rubber band and stick it underneath the clip and then put the clip back on and that puts enough friction on the female side of the pivot and it allows you to actually unscrew the pivot screw. It's a really, really strange process and I hate having to do it, but I keep it in here just in case. Uh, and I keep some Teflon tape, just kind of the same deal as the thread locker. But if you don't want to use thread locker, then you can use this Teflon tape. And uh, it's handy for a lot of things, actually. Um, in here, I keep Q-tips most of the time. Uh, I just included this coarse diamond uh, freebie I got from DMT, which honestly I'm going to take out of here now. I just did that to travel. Uh, normally, I keep Q-tips and these little, uh, I think they're dental picks. I got them at Publix. Uh, I use these things a lot. They're just little tiny plastic picks. They have a, a wedged end and then a pointy end down here. This kind of looks like a hockey stick. But both ends are pointy and sometimes with frame locks if you get a bit of oil on the actual locking face uh, they'll stick. So I'll just take these and I'll get in here and, and rub the oil and grime off the locking face like that. Uh, as you can see there's a little gunk on there now. And also, uh, if there's grime stuck in here, they're good to get in and, and pull the grime out, pocket lint, stuff like that. They actually come in handy. So I think these were like a dollar. Uh, just little dental picks, plastic dental picks. And then Q-tips are definitely self-explanatory. Uh, lastly, I keep a little Smith's Arkansas stone in here just for quick blade touch-ups if, if I need to do that. I uh, got that at Lowe's, I think, for 4 or $5. I keep a Sharpie in here to mark the edge on a knife if I need to, uh, to see what I'm doing with a sharpening stone. And also, Sharpie is a good lubricant. If you have a frame lock knife that's sticking, you color on the blade tang, and uh, Sharpie will act as a lubricant. It's the, the carbon in here. It's either carbon or graphite, which graphite is carbon. Uh, I can't remember. Don't quote me. It's either carbon or graphite that's in these that, that acts as a lubricant. In here, I have another little set of dental picks, but these are metallic. And I have this little light-up mirror in here. Uh, I haven't really used that yet. Don't know of anything to use that on, but it came with a kit, so I'll leave it in there. These are just two little dental picks. Same deal, just use them to, to get crud out of my knives. You can see a little wedged end right here and also a pick. Uh, tons of uses for these. Also came from uh, my gun experience. I was into guns way before knives and dental picks are amazing for cleaning carbon off a bolt face of an AR-15. <laughs> they work really well for that and they also work good for knives. Uh, I keep a pencil in here, same deal, uh, lubes the lock face on frame lock knives. Works really well. Um, in here I have a gun bluing pencil or pen which isn't supposed to be in here. I have a lens pen which isn't supposed to be in here. I have a little ruler which I use a lot. I don't know where you get these but I honestly if you can find one I recommend it. Uh, it does eighths, sixteenths, uh, 30 seconds and 64 of an inch and it's six inches but honestly for measuring knives and stuff this is perfect six inches is more than adequate to measure blade shapes and stuff and with such uh, resolution right here I mean 64 is pretty high re resolution for measuring in inches uh, you can really see the differences in blade lengths and stuff like that really good tool and I also use it as a straight edge to see when my edge pro stones uh, are dished out, I can just lay this on the stone and if I see light coming through on the underside, then I know they're dished out uh, and I need to flatten them. As you can tell, most every item in here serves a dual purpose or maybe three purposes. Uh, I like to carry things that serve many purposes because I don't want to carry one thing that has one specific use and it take up a lot of space. So. Uh, last thing I have in here is a
Birchwood Casey Super Black. And this is for touching up uh, black coatings on stuff like blades or handles. I honestly got it for my AR-15. More gun stuff. Uh, if I scratch my AR-15, then this works really well for touching up the parkerizing on that. And also, a lot of good, a lot of knives are parkerized. A lot of clips are parkerized, so this works really well for that. And it's just a, a little rattle pin, just to touch up the coating. So, anyway, this video ran on a lot longer than I thought it would, but there's a lot of tools in here and a lot of a lot of cool things that I wanted to share with you guys. Just a lot of handy tools that that I use on a really regular basis. So I figured you guys might might enjoy it or might get some ideas from this. So anyway, sorry it was so long, and thanks to all my new subscribers. I'm gonna have a thousand sub contest here pretty soon. Uh, I've, I'll probably reach a thousand subs tomorrow or Tuesday, something like that. I'm gonna think of a contest and a couple items to give away. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.